We're going to look at 8.4. This is called the leap of faith. Now in this, we have a base case and a recursive case. We talked about the base case being it's usually some, usually a small, the smallest value that makes sense and you return whatever would make sense for that. So for factorial, it was a one. We're about to look at Fibonacci. Uh, but before we do that, this leap of faith right here, you have to assume that your recursive method works when n, and for us, we're decreasing our n in all these examples so far. So we have to assume that it works for all smaller values of n. So we're going to assume that what I have highlighted is actually going to return the right value. Assuming that this returns the right value, if we multiply the factorial by n, so if we can compute the factorial of n minus 1 correctly, which we're assuming we can, then how do we get the factorial of n is we multiply n by the factorial of n minus 1. And mathematics, this is called the uh, inductive assumption right here. And that's what the leap of faith is talking about. So we're going to skip this uh, in single digit part. Uh, we Our factorial looks like this already, uh, except I put an else in it. You don't need the else because if you return, you don't execute anything below. But our factorial is exactly the same functioning as this. We're going to look at Fibonacci now. So Fibonacci sequence, you can look up Fibonacci on Wikipedia, but just to warn you, uh, when you first look up Fibonacci, you need to look up Fibonacci number because Fibonacci is a person uh, who discovered Fibonacci numbers. And I think there's other, apparently there's a prison break character named Fibonacci, but we want to look at the Fibonacci number. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, and then we're going to go down to the recursive computation. Here we go. The Fibonacci of zero is zero. Fibonacci of one is one. And the Fibonacci of N is the previous two Fibonacci numbers added together. So this one's a little bit weird. It has two base cases. So let's think about what that means. Fibonacci of one is zero. Fibonacci of two is one. I'm going to transform our factorial into a Fibonacci method. So let's change the name. We'll call it fib. 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 All right, so it's going to start at zero. Um, I'm going to turn these back to an int. Of course, you need to have an int equals to an integer and compared to an integer. And then these all need to be int. And then get rid of that decimal place. Fib. All right, I think I've transformed it. Of course, it's going to compute the factorial because logically I've not changed this. So there's two base cases now. Fibonacci of one is one and Fibonacci of two is two. So we shouldn't see zero if n equals one or n equals two. Uh, we're gonna return, oops, need two equal signs to compare. And I think these are both one. Okay, so we'll return one, that's great else Fibonacci of n is the two previous ones added together. So we don't want to do n times. We want Fibonacci of n minus 1. So that's the previous Fibonacci plus Fib n minus 2. So that is how to compute the Fibonacci. It's the two added together. And again, we're going to start we better not start at zero because I didn't account for zero here. Zero would be too low. The smallest one we should use is one because zero would be below our base case. There we go. So fib of one is one, fib of two is one, fib of three is the two numbers above it added together. So fib of four is the two numbers above it added together. One plus two is three. So Fibonacci of five is the two numbers above it, two and three, and you get five. Fibonacci of six is three and five, which is eight, et cetera, et cetera. So our Fibonacci appears to work. Let's uh, go to 20, see what happens. These numbers don't get big as quickly. We'll go to 100. Notice it's going really, really slow. 
And my computer's pretty fast. So mine slowed down right around 40 or so. So I'm going to hit the stop button. I don't want to sit here and wait till it hits 100. I don't have that type of time. All right, let's stop. I'm going to stop mine at 40. Hopefully that'll run pretty quick. Let's get crazy. We'll go 42. 43, because that'll run at 42 times. Okay, so it started to go slow. Why is that? Well, if you look, this time we didn't just call fib once, we called it twice. So that means you're going to be calling this Fibonacci a lot of times. And as to how many, that's a good question. It gets big quickly. And you can tell when this was 100, it got big really, really quickly. So I want to know how many times is this actually being called? And I just want to make sure there's nothing else we need in this chapter. So yeah, we'll do the next count up later. Uh, so I want to actually know how many times is Fibonacci being called. It's The reason it's going slow is be, it's being called a lot. So I'm going to need a counter, but I don't want to put the counter as a parameter in here because it will get reset each time. It's tempting to put the counter here, but it actually needs to be modified inside of here. And so what, where it needs to be declared is outside of main, and it's gonna to need to be declared up here. So I got int counter equals zero. All right, we immediately have a problem. Why can't I set counter equal to zero? Well, we're inside a static method and counter is non-static. And that's exactly what this error is gonna tell you. Non-static variable counter cannot be referenced from a static context or from a static method. So the way we fix this, static right there. Oh, I think it's static int, not int static. Okay. Here we go, counter zero. All right, now. I am going to the first line, I'm going to do plus plus counter. Uh, and then let's display counter. So we reset counter to zero, call Fibonacci, print out counter, and counter should get incremented or increased each time Fibonacci is called. All right, so this is a little bit hard to read because you have numbers right next to numbers. So let's make this easier to read. I'm gonna take out the LN. We'll just print it all on one line. There we go. Now notice this counter is getting big really quickly and we know there's limitations as to how many times a method can call itself. This is getting crazy big right here. All right, how big is it getting? Well, short answer is huge. Uh, let's visually display this. I'm gonna make a comma separated value file, open it in Excel, and then build a chart from that. So how do we do it? Comma separated values is a number, comma, another number, comma, maybe more numbers, and then a new line, and that pattern repeats. So I wanna print out I, comma, counter. I do need to call Fibonacci, but I don't want to print it out. So I don't want all this stuff printing, so I'm just gonna call fib i right there. So again, I'm gonna call Fibonacci, but I'm not actually gonna print out the value. I'm just gonna print out i in the counter. And look at that, beautiful. Two numbers separated by commas. Copy all that stuff. So now I'm gonna click chapter eight. That's the uh, package folder, right click new. You need to go to empty file. I'm gonna call it output. Now we've done .txt before, but I'm gonna do CSV for comma separated value. So those, will be a CSV file, and I'm gonna paste everything I just copied into here. Save it, and in the next video, I'll open it up in Excel.